behind the scenes for that reason. Got it. Uh, looks like this broadcast was deleted on Facebook. I don't know what happened there. Uh, to stream to Facebook, create a new broadcast, or just remove this destination. Re-add it. Hey, Rob. Hey, how's it going? Just, just so you know, we, um, I think we're live on YouTube at the moment. I'm doing pre-show behind the scenes because there was a little technical thing where it said, um, it said, uh, <laughs> somehow this thing got deleted from Facebook. Somebody must have been messing around. Mm -hmm. So I am trying to um, follow the directions. On, uh, back up, eh? Yeah, it just said to delete it and, re and redo it. So I'm doing that right now. You guys can Great. discuss amongst yourselves, but we are, I believe, showing on YouTube at the moment. Um, let's see. So I'm just... Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> Not like we can... Shows good dedication. Very good yes. dedication. Yes. Stay, with, cool. stay with it. Make it work. Yeah, yeah so exactly. I'm re-adding re re it. So it's... Um... Perfect. I like the uh, the green going. screens on uh, that you guys got going there. Yeah. Bill's right. um, Bill has moved from somewhere to Manhattan. Yeah, my my <laughs> my son works in Manhattan. He, he's got a gaming company and uh, does uh, virtual reality work and all that kind of good stuff. And I go visit him to see what the high life is like. And took a picture out the window one day, so I'm putting it to good use. Oh, that's good. <laughs> uh, I'm just highlighting the beautiful. Um, 1960s wallpaper that we've got here well that works for sure <laughs> it does it does it does it does uh, so rob so, coming from canada and bill storm this is bill storm everybody coming uh, at us from new york oh, <laughs> um, like i say this is a little bit pre-show at the moment because i'm posting on facebook and things and here we have it now it is there we are live on facebook i just need to add a link so that the rest of the people that signed up can find it so you guys um get to know each other a little <laughs> so what are you doing in manhattan what am i doing in manhattan I'm, uh, I'm thinking i wish i was there no i actually don't wish i was there it's the worst <laughs> place in the world to be right now right now yeah yeah now my son's up on the 17th floor of a building and uh He's trying to escape this weekend, so I'm hoping that happens. I really do hope that happens. It's very difficult for a parent to think about that. Yeah, definitely. Which, which part of the country are you in right now? Uh, I'm in upstate New York, uh, Syracuse area. Yeah. Home of the Orange Men. Uh, if you probably don't follow that, but our basketball team is usually good. Not so much this past year, but... <laughs> Uh, okay, Bas basketball. For, for some reason, I was thinking like Oompa Loompas from Willy Wonka. But, uh, no, 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 no. no that, it doesn't work there. And how about you, Rob? Uh, I am uh, currently on the west coast of uh, Canada, but uh, typically I'm uh, in Calgary, Alberta, the uh, center of uh, uh, Canada's energy sector. Yeah, I mean, Canada's my uh, adopted uh, country for sure. I love it up there. We used to, uh, and still do, uh, do a lot of traveling in the area, including the West coast. And Ma Montreal is only like three and a half hours from where I live. Oh, uh, very lucky. I love and, Montreal. Oh, Montreal is amazing. And it's a place above it, uh, called Mont Tremblant. It's a ski area, but it's a four season mm -hmm. area. That's yeah. nice. That's very, very nice. You want to escape and get into the mountains the whole bit. It's beautiful. Nice. So, so do you do uh, photography in upstate New York? Oh, yeah, quite a bit. Uh, you know, my background really is I've done a lot of production almost my whole career. Uh, whether mm -hmm. audio, I started out with that type of stuff early on. And uh, then got into video and still photography and the still photography I love. And actually, what I'm, what's in the real estate area is sort of how do you combine all of those kinds of interests and try to create mm -hmm. pictures that are powerful, if you can call them that for real estate. And I think you can, they're, I think they're tough to do. You, you know, it takes, uh, it takes the right conditions. Like let's face it, you know, you can have a beautiful house and then the weather is just too good or too bad and it'll destroy <laughs> and destroy a perfectly good shot or maybe the mood isn't right for it, right? Like, 
I had this one place where um, the interior was so modern and sleek and, and dark cabinets, everything was nice and dark. And it would have looked perfect on a cloudy, hazy, misty day because it had that, um, that kind of romantic feel to it. Right. But, you know, unfortunately, when I shot it, it was nice and sunny and it just had too much contrast between the outside and the inside. <laughs> it didn't look that great. Um, but, you know, it's uh, as long as you get the, the right mood and the right time and everything fits, then, yeah, there's magic. Well, I, I'll tell you, the biggest learning experience I think I had with light was a long time ago. I used to follow Ansel Adams' works, that type of thing. Yeah. And I uh, went out there with four by five cameras and filming today and did that type of photography. And he had, it was called the zone system, which actually it relates mm -hmm. to real estate, but people don't know that. They typically don't go back into that era. But the whole idea of the contrast and the number of different blacks to grays to whites, et cetera. And mm -hmm. going through that experience and then trying to relate it to interiors, I think is relevant. But the first clue I got about Ansel Adams is that he cheated because I had my first experience when I went to the Alps. And for yeah. the first time, I discovered there were what he called uh, zones of light. I think there were 10 or 11. Mm -hmm. Where I live in upstate New York, we have three. It's so great. It's like being in Seattle. It's gray all the time. So yeah. I, the guy cheated. No wonder he got such great photographs. I wish houses uh, were like the that. original. He's the original tone mapper. Oh, yeah. absolutely. The original HDR guy. That's true. He yeah. would have loved this. Hey, uh, thanks for uh, giving me a minute there. Um, there was some on Facebook. It looks like the live video was deleted somehow. So I just restarted that. I hope uh, people find it now. Um, the event was still there. Uh, so um, pre-show behind the scenes done. You guys kind of introduced yourselves a little bit already, but um, we can go by way making it official. Uh, this is, so Rob Moroto there on the bottom of the screen. Wait a minute. Hello. There he is. Coming through a little bit uh, hazy today. Hailing, uh. from, hailing from Canada. Mm -hmm. um, Bill Storm up there in the top right, coming from New York. I'm Ron. I'm in San Francisco, near San Francisco, even though it looks like I'm right downtown right now. Um, so we're here for some question and answer on real estate photography. And um, uh, I should start out by saying that um, there are, we started doing these, this little series, and it's become a series now. So thanks everybody for telling us that you like it and, and asking questions and, and helping answer questions. For instance, last week, Bill Storm that's on here today was answering questions in the comments. It was great. And so everybody's getting more involved and I love that. And so that's, we might just continue doing this. Um, you can ask questions, anything about, well, photography really, but let's try to keep it to real estate. And um, we're, uh, we are kind of uh, use a lot of bracketing HDR kind of guys. We, don't only use that, only use bracketing. I had like, I've been, um, we, and a lot of people that are photomatics users use a, a flash element as well. So we don't have, you can, we don't have to stick exactly to any, anything in particular. We have a lot of freedom here. It's a, this started out being in a quarantine time and so it's a freedom to talk about what we want. So bring some questions. If you're on, if you're watching, I put a link in the comments where you can, um, you can pop on with us you can come on one of the videos. There's room for up to six, I think, but that's, that's too many. If we get a few people on, then we'll have you come on and jump on and jump off. Okay. I'll stop and just give a quick, um, one more thing about what Photomatics is doing for the whole COVID thing. I'll, I'll just kind of find a time for a break later because we've taken so long to start. Um, yeah. let's, that, I would like to start with the first question and a tangent already, if you don't mind. Um, <laughs> and we'll do a little bit more in, you know what, <laughs> you guys did enough introductions. Let's move on. Otherwise we'll be here all day. Uh, Hassan asked a question in the private chat. So first of all, guys, can you, uh, just ask the questions in the comments that way everybody can see them. I can even put them up on the screen if they're in the regular comments. So don't use the private chat for that. However, the question's great. It's, do you think Matterport is the future of real estate photography, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic? So that's a really good 
real estate photography question. Uh, let's talk about that for a second. And um, I can't, like I say, I can't pop it up, but I'll pop up future sure. questions. I see a few are coming in now. I see hello from a few places, but Matterport. Um, I know, uh, Rob, I know Rob has experience there. Bill, do you have experience with Matterport? Or are you, I do not. I do okay. not. Let's uh, let's have Rob. Why don't you start? Uh, well, start. On you the know, call. let's uh, let's face it. I was. Um, we've been doing Matterport now since two thousand and five. What is it? Twenty twenty right now? Five years. So two thousand fifteen, and they were always a little bit harder to sell. Like it, we always told realtors that, yeah, you know what, the Matterport's not going to sell your property, but it, but it may get you the listing. So the way for realtors to secure listings rather than to actually sell properties. And now it's completely shifted. And yeah, we, uh, I would say of the uh, 20 or so appointments that we do a day, uh, half of them at least get Matterport's done. And half of them. so, wow. yeah. It's it's ridiculous, and uh, so lots of Matterports are are being done, and you know we've been um, you know we've been practicing with uh, a few different things here, but now I was talking with, uh, with a friend of mine who works at uh, Rico, and just talking about uh, the thetas and uh, the theta. Uh, you know what theta is? Yeah, I was gonna say uh, Ray, Rayco, Rayco makes um that's the company that used to make printers, I think, and a lot of things are still does, and they make a yeah. the Theta three hundred and sixty degree camera. So it's a fantastic little device that's um fits in your pocket and you can take instant three sixties. Exactly. Now those things can be used, uh the Theta V and Theta Z one can both be used to do matter course. And I was talking to him and he said, Well, these things are sold out everywhere and I was no, you know what? It's sold out and back ordered. And just to give you an example, in San Diego, I have one brokerage that just ordered 31 of these, like one for every agent. So the agency is actually getting the backport account, and then they're just giving these uh, 360 cameras away to their agents and saying, "Go, here's how to do Matterports. Use your phone." Like it's become so easy, so accessible, and so easy to use that, yeah. Uh, the realtors are even doing it. And so to answer the question, is it the future of real estate photography? I believe it is. I think it is going to be the new normal to have Matterports. But I also believe that the power of the Matterport is going to be taken away from the real estate photographers. And it's going to go direct to the realtors or their assistants who are going to take out a little theta V and yeah. uh, do matter course themselves because let's face it it's it's easier to do a matterport with very little photography experience hey, than... Rob, you're you're um you're suffering from um from a little lag and low low packet sending volume oh do you, am I? Do, you, okay. do you have a do you have like a the family watching Netflix or something at the same on the same. <laughs> no, yeah. Let me just change that uh, to. I yeah. think we're I think we're getting most of it, but it's. Let's see now. Hopefully, that's a little bit better. It's actually I just turned it down from seven twenty to four eighty. Uh, Let's see what happens. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I agree that Matterport now. Um, it, what um. That Matterport. Ron, Ron I've got a question. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's not something, a product that I've had to work with. I'm also a broker, uh, not just do with photography. Mm -hmm. And that's not something I've seen in our area whatsoever. Maybe oh, okay. a lot of the other people tuning in are not familiar with this. And so it might be helpful to actually, you know, what's Matterport? Yeah, I was going to say, Rob, can you share that link again oh, that we had? Yeah, up before? of course. Uh, oh, what did it start with? I might still have it here. Yeah, no, if, you, if you could, that'd be great. Because I don't know if I have it on here let me see if i can just it was um, um might have started <laughs> it was on uh, last last week but yeah i'll definitely get uh a uh, link there for you but Manaport is a 360 virtual tour uh program where it's, it's neat you get to walk through an entire house and 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 see it it's um uh, um you get to navigate it and it uh, you can use it even on something like um, uh, Google Cardboard or the uh, what was that one? The Oculus, okay. um, the three D goggles, and 
literally you can just look around and see inside of a house and move around like a video game. It's uh, your son would love it <laughs> for sure. Yes, I, I would think so. He's he's very much into the virtual reality stuff for sure. Uh, and you know, we were talking with uh, uh, last week when we did this. We were talking with um, with Dawn and Dawn Connors from uh, from Kansas, and she was saying that in Kansas they're making it so that every listing now has to have a virtual tour, which is uh, which is which is exciting. It's interesting, sure. Um, shoot, I can't even seem to pull one up on my phone. Um, yeah, I'm looking, but, for, uh, I'm looking for that one we had up last time on your site, and now I'm um, now I can't uh, why can't I get there? Yeah, uh, so the, the the thing with it is that well, actually, why don't um, let's let's put a little pin in it and um, we can sure. jump on a couple other questions. Can you uh, grab grab that link and we'll we can yeah, come back to that because just take a quick look here. Matterport is, is a cool uh subject for sure um uh yes uh laura we were um where'd you go <laughs> wanted to talk about um twilight photos and we're planning on doing that yes. as well but uh just thought we'd uh i like this interactivity thing where people are asking questions and it's uh, a cool thing to to do i can i can grab one that's uh right in my wheelhouse while rob's looking for that um james says uh do you have a favorite photomatics preset for interiors wow. um yeah <laughs> um <laughs> presets uh it's a good it's a cool subject because um they're very useful but they're also kind of misunderstood sometimes so uh yeah i can if i felt like this was going to come across really well on a screen share i could show you something but for photomatics users um well let's see for instance why don't i do this Stand by for just a second. I was just going to load up. Let's, uh, I'm going to take the opportunity to, sh to just do a little quick demo. Hmm. Let's see, share a different screen. Okay. Um, ba -ba -bum. Sharing screen, sharing screen. Screen two, share. There it is. Okay, the screen's getting a little busy now. <laughs> Let's see. Um, okay, so I just pulled up. I just pulled up a a um, photomatics instance there, and I'm dragging in. Uh, I'm dragging in um, four photos here, real quick. Um, so all I'm doing is is combining these four photos that you can't tell probably very well from there right now but it's a, just a simple interior shot it doesn't need any alignment or ghosting because it's an interior nothing's moving around okay so presets some people want to use them as the finished product no and that's not always going to work um sometimes yes and it's a lot of my answers are always it's going to depend on your your something, fill in the blank, your workflow, mm -hmm. your interest, your, um, how you shot the shots. There's going to, there are so many things that go into it. So, um, what I want, you'll notice like I really quickly, I grabbed this on the top, right? There's a section that's a, that's for real estate style presets and they, they tend to work more for real estate, but again, e any settings you're going to use, and this doesn't just for photomatics, I think this goes for everything, but whatever settings you're going to use are based on so many things, how you shot the thing, what the scene was like, what was the lighting like, uh, um, what kind of decisions did you make for white balance? What did you do? You know, there's so many things. And what are you looking to do? Um, how are you trying to go for a quick real estate result? That's just, you just in and out real fast and you deliver it immediately without too much retouching. Are you going for an architectural result where you're going to do a lot of pre and post processing and, so there's so many so many answers, but the point is the real the presets can show you what's possible. So you can go from kind of realistic to soft and moody, you know, however you want to do it. Um, soft and moody can be great because it gives you this flattened image that has this cap uh, gives you the potential to then go in and into wherever you are, or Capture One or Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever user you are, and go in and choose details from there using 
using contrast and adjusting areas and stuff like that. Uh, and you can always save your own presets. So I'm going to wrap this up here and just say that um, choose a preset that gets you sort of close. Like this one is pretty close to what I would be looking for, for, for what I'm going to do, but I'm adjusting with some brightness um, might adjust for some temperature changes, depending. It was a gray, foggy San Francisco summer day. So there's not any blue sky out there to show off, unfortunately, <clears throat> but this is, so let's say I'm going to go for this look here and I can save this preset down here on bottom left. And then I can use that for the rest of that house, that room, that area, however I want to do it. And then those presets can be used in batch, et cetera. So what nice. presets do I like, um, out of the box for real estate, there are, there's, there are interior presets and just to, for those people that want to go deeper, if you look on the top left there above the sliders, there are these different options. And there's one called fusion interior. And that whole method is intended for interior scenes that have a bright window. So like the one behind me or the one on my screen. So that's a good place to start too. So do I have favorite ones? Yeah, but I usually make them or if I run batches, I, and if I run a batch and I intend to do some post-processing on it, I'll, I like interior too. So good places to start. So I'll just leave you with that for the moment. Yeah. You know what? I agree. We do, we do the same thing. We take, uh, we start off with interior too adjust it and then we made our presets based on that so you yeah. know we've got a preset for what we do for daytime we've got a separate one for twilight because twilight tends to be a little bit different uh, and you want to have a little bit more contrast in the uh in the shadows uh, for twilight stuff and then as well with uh with exteriors because we want to boost some of the shadows and uh, pull down the highlights a lot more it's just so that we've got a really dark blue sky or right. um right. yeah so yeah, the presets, uh, saving the presets are fantastic. And once you get your workflow created, where you know where you're going to be changing your white balance and you know where you're going to be setting all your making all your major settings, you can make your presets then work with pretty much any photos that you have. And we've gotten down to the point for uh, us where we're down to uh, two presets now, and they're they're essentially daytime or twilight, and down, that's down what we do two for. Presets? down to two, uh, two presets for photomatics and then we're actually down to three three uh presets for lightroom so after we put everything into photomatics we then pull all that into lightroom and then apply the presets from there for one for twilight one for exteriors and one for interior uh interior daytime and, I, think the, I think the take the takeaway is um and i say i say this a lot is that it so many things depend and you know we're yeah. Real estate photography is real estate photography is way harder than it seems. So most people probably watching understand that they have some challenges with real estate photography. And it, you know, I've, I always say these us people in real estate photography don't get enough credit, don't get paid enough. I mean, it's a really it's a it's a much more difficult kind of scene than people realize. And there's a workflow to it. So uh, there isn't a people will disagree, but I don't think there's a holy grail of of automatic results at this point. So yeah, well, I kind of have a, a parallel to that. Uh, part of my background, actually a big part of my background, is I was very heavily involved in research on preservation of media materials for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we always had to worry about is authenticity of the image that we're trying to get. And when you try to get the authentic representation of a room, that is probably far, well, my mind anyway, that's a, probably one of the biggest challenges in photography I've ever run across. I mean, yeah, you go outside, you've got all kinds of filters you can use, and it's more of an aesthetic kind of thing. It's a subje subjective thing. And then you go into a room, you say, oh, this should be easy. I'll go and I'll click and I'll use my flash or something. Uh, it's anything yes. but the truth. And, and the parallel with uh, some of the stuff you used to do, for example, with audio uh, preservation, is to try to understand if, if, let's say, all of us were rock stars. And we uh, now we do our recording and then someone in a preservation uh, archive somewhere across the globe decides that your record would really sound better by the way they tweak it. And this happens all the time. I, I'm not making yeah. this up. This is true. Yeah. It happens all the time. And you say, what on God's earth are you doing? 
uh, that I want my recording to stay with my recording. And, and yeah. to do that faithfully is far more difficult than tweaking some echo and all this other stuff that yeah. engineers put in. And we got the same thing happening with this. You want the thing the Photomax really impresses me with is that is, as you said, it's a baseline. It says, all right, here's here's the shadows, here's the mid-range, here's the highlights, here it is, and I'm gonna give you all this to work with, but you're not done. You know, it's, it's like Rob said, that, and you said, that that's where it starts, here's the data. Now, do the best job you can of making it so that it's palpable to people because it really tends to look flat. In my case, I tend to look at natural first, but boy, that's just the beginning. And I've used all the other types of settings too yeah. to try to end with the product I like. And the other thing that we all agree on is being able to make your own presets. That's heaven. That's, that's really, really heaven because you say, if you get some, I tweak it. I know the next time I run into a situation, I got mixed lighting and I got to do this and I got to do that. There's a preset that's likely to get me a lot further before I have to move on to go into Lightroom or Photoshop. And, and that's, that's a strength, but having all that data to begin with is fantastic. Yeah, nat natural is a, a, the best way to start for just what it says, natural. It's kind of a, a simple, uh, natural looking result. And so it'll just depend on the scene. You know, it's, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. Always, 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 we used to joke around about how many answers are, it depends. So mm -hmm. that's uh, something to know about ahead of time. Hey, uh, oh. Laura, Laura J, um, could you comment in the regular comments? Because I see um, in the private chat. Uh, so people yeah. that use the StreamYard link and pop on can uh, use can use the private chat. I think is how that's working. So um, she was ask uh, she was asking, are there other options to Matterport? So we should circle back to Matterport. Okay. Um, do do we have a good place to show one, Rob? Yeah, yours? I just I just emailed it to you. And I emailed it. Oh, come on. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, <laughs> okay, give, give me a moment. <laughs> sure, no problem. And while I look at that, there's also, I, I also emailed you uh, two links beforehand with uh, some um, Dropbox things to uh, okay. some Twilight stuff, which we'll be talking about later. Okay. Um, but uh, just, to, just to go on the, um, you know, just like you were saying before, you're right. Like, we do presets for, uh, we run off of, uh, Essentially, one or two presets for uh, Romax, and then three presets for Lightroom. But you know what? It's like I always get this like cooking. You know, you got a recipe, but your ingredients can change slightly. So you can get a, a piece of fruit that's a, or a vegetable that's a little bit more ripe than it usually is. And so because of that, you will have to adjust things later on. And just like that with uh, with what we do, we know that if we get into a place and we just shoot. And we shot it just a little bit too bright. And yes, of, of course, after all the presets are done, then in line, we do have to adjust that to make it perfect. Uh, so, you know, uh, just to get past the idea that, you know, yes, it is pretty quick with workflow and presets to get to a uh, finished product, but we use those to get to, I would say, around 90% finished product. And the last 10% is checking every image and making sure that's 100% perfect. Yeah, I got a comment too on the Matterport thing is I, I raised the issue earlier. I didn't know what it was, mm -hmm. uh, but let's see if I got it right. Uh, because I, I think it's going to be relative to an attitude I have, I suppose. Uh, okay. Video seemed to be a really hot item for a while, mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of people didn't really want to do that. The editing, it sounds like Matterport could facilitate making that easier. But the whole point that I believe at least is that you know it's like it's like or it's like a rock and roll song the beginning of it the first 10 seconds matter and when somebody's going through an mls system that they're going to still see a still image and to me that that first 10 seconds is where the beginning of your sale and if that mm -hmm. still image isn't rock solid nobody's going to listen to the rest of the song and so the power of the still image I think it's proven that even when people were trying to do videos and get fancy, that each frame, each frame is more powerful than Matterhorn or Matterport sounds like it could be kind of cutesy and a gimmick to begin with. But I said, maybe it's just uh, my mindset, but I still think the idea of walking people through with spectacular still images 
is something I think that will overcome it and last over time. And, mm -hmm. and, a, and a, one approach at least to think about is that it, when I approach the whole idea of shooting a room or a home, is not to think of it as a still photographer, but almost as a movie maker. You know, what's the, what's the first 10 seconds of it? And what do each of the next frames do to complement that? So, uh, so I'm just throwing that out to uh, maybe start a little debate. Sure. Well, you know what? I, I absolutely agree. We look at we look at photos. Um, we look at how the user uses photos. Uh, so, for example, a lot of the, a lot of the people who are looking at the photos, they'll uh, they when they first get that email from the realtor saying, "Here are the 20, uh, 20 uh, listings that came up today that meet your criteria." They're going to uh, flip through that, and that only has one image, so it has a front exterior of the house, right? And so right there that one front exterior has to, has to be strong enough that it's going to draw somebody in absolutely and, and once that and once you're into that then the next 10 images have to be just as strong to keep their interest so we always say let's get the order of the photos right so you got your front you got your front exterior next you would probably want to have a feeling of entering home so one entry shot is good and then Let's do three of the living room, two of the dining room, four of the kitchen. And the way that people look at it is it's on their phones. And they go flip, 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 flip. So all the photos have to look like they all belong. So the lighting has to be right. The color, uh, color balance on each of them has to be succinct so that you're not going from like, oh, this one's a little bit more yellow, this one's a little bit more blue, this one's, a, you know. It has to all be perfect and it has to, it has to flow very well. And if it doesn't, then it's not going to look that great, and it's it's funny. People will people will watch something that is great and perfect, and they'll just think that was it. Now, if they go into say something and they see something that's wrong, even if it's minor, it'll stand out that much more. And that's what I find is. Uh, is, is tough about real estate photography because they they never judge you based on the best photo in there. They based on the worst, and to make sure that you have a great photo set, you have to make sure that every single one is at that same high level, and that's tough. Hey Scott, we'll talk about computers in a second. Scott Chappelle, I think, but I sorry Rob, but I just pulled up a uh, Matterport. I'll, I'll, let me make a couple of get my snide comments in here real quick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what you guys are what what's happening here is one reason that Matterport and video and frankly what I do too with 360 kind of like a good photography version of Matterport with a little with less cool interactivity. Um, that's what we're talking. What's happening is one of the problems is it's really kind of hard to show and kind of hard to get your head around and start using. And uh, also. I found that video has also has usually been something that sounds much more exciting to the customer than it actually ends up being. So that's just real quick. Uh, they're just a little bit harder to get to than some great photography. I mean, it always comes back to photos, in my opinion. Now, I also think that, look what I'm, uh, you guys can see this, right? I'm walking through this house quite interactive, interactively. It uh, has such a great cool factor when I figure out how to get back to the 3D dollhouse. Right down the bottom there. Uh, there it is. This okay. makes it cool too. Is so, it, now the, the, it just, I don't, I, don't, I, I want to let you talk, Rob, but you're um, breaking up a lot. So let me just take a couple more things about this is that it's a, it's a Matterport first. It was a camera that you had to use their camera. Now it can be done with the theta that we were mentioning. So, it's a lot quicker and less expensive, but their camera does the whole thing for you. So anybody can walk in and follow the rules about how far away the things should be. And I'm sure there's some other details that Rob can fill us in on, but basically they walk through, put the camera down, tell the camera you know, to, to get out of the way because it's a 360. It's going to shoot the whole thing. So they got to get out of the way and tell the camera to go. Or I think in the case of the Matterport camera, you can walk around with the camera, right? You can stay behind it, but the theta shoots all at once. So you have to get out of the room. Anyway, you build this thing by shooting the photos and the Matterport service builds it for you. 
Is that, that about right, Rob? It you does. Know, and not only that, away? Not only that, when you take the Matterport and you're scanning it, the the app will tell you whether or not the you're in the right place, or if you have enough scans, or uh, if the scan that you took is too far away from the last scan. Yeah. So, so suffice to suffice to say, it's a a very simple for the user. You, you have to invest in yeah. the thing, but the, for the user, it's pretty simple. And to me, the downsides are the photography is you get what you get. It's automatic, and it, and for the cool mm-hmm. factor level, I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying it's not as good as someone can do that really knows what they're doing. And the other thing is that it's still only working inside, correct? It is. When you get outside, you can take 360s of the outside, and uh, it's it's all right. Um, but quite frankly, you know, I, I look at stuff like this and video and any of the alternative things that you can use for marketing and I, I say to my clients, you got to choose the right one for the demographic that you're going for. So, for example, if you're shooting a place that, uh, say, you're, uh, say you got contracted out to shoot a retirement community, you're not going to use Matterport. You know, the 65 plus crowd is not going to do virtual tours on a Matterport. For them, if you want something that is going to be able to give a tour, a video may actually be better because there's less need to be computer savvy to get through the thing. And when it, when we look at it, all of this, and it all comes down to one thing, what is the minimal marketing product that you need? And that becomes photography. And so your photography has to be bang on because it's from that that they will jump on to whether they go through the virtual tour or whether they'll go and watch the video. I think another practical point too, is that it looks again, I'm I'm being introduced to this, that house better be pretty damn nice shape in every single room. Um, (laughs) I'm serious. I mean, the first thing, you know, when I'm teaching people is what's the subject. And if the subject has got socks hanging all over the place and things like that, because everybody's not selling multi-million dollar houses. I mean, the real world is not that at all. And so you are really at a disadvantage not to have at least some selectability because if your your particular client isn't going to put that place in maximum viewable shape, you're going to have more problems than you have solutions. Yeah, they need to be staged and ready to go. Yeah, that's that's nice. I see that on TV shows, but I don't see it in reality. No, like how many times have we gone into a place where we can shoot one angle because the rest of the crap in the room is up against one right. wall? Right. <laughs> yes, yes, I agree. Uh, um, uh, yeah, um, uh, Will, Will, is it Will Street? Or <laughs> my yeah, top client just informed me that all third-party access to listings needs to be needs to sign a questionnaire and COVID nineteen waiver contract. Yeah. Has anyone else experienced this? So, Will, yes, we have experienced that. But what we find is that that is uh, more brokerage to brokerage uh, in our area and as well from project to project. So some of the builders are looking for that to keep their staff safe. Uh, Some brokerages are instituting policies like that to try and keep their uh, clients safe. But um, where we are... That's even happening in um, in the areas that are having uh, restaurants and things opening up. Apparently, that that same kind of thing is happening. Everyone's having to sign off, and I think identify themselves and everything. It's kind of, you know, I mean, it makes sense in some ways and it's scary in some ways. But so I think that's a general, I think that's a general re uh, is it a reaction or a uh, um, to businesses opening. I think they're covering their butts a bit, mm-hmm. and I don't know. I suppose different places are calling it law or orders where I think, you know, frankly, if it were me, I think I'd cover myself too. If I had a, a, a restaurant or something where people were, had not had, it had been previously closed. Yeah. It, it all to me, um, I don't know. To, to me, I get frustrated with it. I've been going into live local stores and stuff very regularly all this time. And so I don't want to see the big difference, but I think I'm, I'm just guessing that's what it is. But if somebody knows, if somebody has some details, that's what we're here for is, it's not just us answering que- answering the questions, guys. <laughs> you know, shoot yeah. me some, uh, and and I should take a quick second to so, to say a couple of us, a couple of guys that have been on and gal who've been on, are out shooting today. 
I, I was, you know, let people know, come on if you can yeah. and say hello, comment. They're out shooting, so this is great. I'm very happy about that. And if anybody that wants to share their current situation, if they're getting back to shooting, if they've been doing it all along, if they're going crazy, not working, let us know what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, as well, you know, um, uh, to get back to uh, Laura's point, uh, w maybe we should start uh, talking a little bit about shooting and uh, talking about uh, the Twilight stuff. Yeah, and, and uh, her question... Just trying to knock out some questions. Her questions are: Are there other options to Matterport? We we talked about Eye Guide with Paul yeah. Paul Menard one before. Eye Guide is a comp competitor, direct competitor, mm -hmm. I think. But a great competitor, in my opinion, is get yourself a Theta and uh, use Matterport because it's a lot cheaper, quicker, a lot quicker, right, Rob? It, it is a lot quicker. the The only downside with the Matterport is that it has a monthly hosting fee. Mm -hmm. right. And you, whereas, that, you, um, do I have? Do I remember right that? I got is actually probably more expensive or, or no it is and it isn't it's um so i guide charges you you sound, a, you sound like me saying it depends <laughs> yeah well it, it the i guide charges you uh per by square foot so it's 20 2.8 cents per square foot to do it and that's in canadian dollars so i don't know what it translates down down in the states but it's 40 um, cents. <laughs> so because it 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 uh it because there is a per square foot cost whereas a matterport is a monthly hosting cost you have to look at it and say well which is which is going to be more right. so for example if you have a uh say a 10 000 square foot place at 2.8 cents a square foot you know you're looking at 280 dollars for your cost to do it whereas with a matterport it's there is no cost. It's just a monthly hosting fee. So for sixty nine dollars, you have twenty five spots that you can use. So it could just take up one of those spots. Right. It's, and, one of, it's one of those calculations you have to make to see which works best for your business, right? Exactly. But if you're going to be hosting it for ten years, well, then it might be better to to do the i guide, which is just a one time cost, and there is no additional hosting fee. Well, that, that so, would only apply. That would only apply to a couple of your best samples, right? Because otherwise, hosting you're just gonna they're not going to be needed terribly long, right? Well, that's what you think. So uh, in our economy uh, up in Calgary, where a oil is at negative, uh, negative dollars and uh, our economy is almost essentially all uh, routed in the energy sector. Yeah, there these houses, our houses are listing for 180 days and some of those things are going for, you know, yeah three four years like there's some rural properties that the benchmark is around two years so they're up there and the other thing is when we shoot these um we shoot them for realtors for their listings and we also shoot them for uh builders and their show homes so with a show home they typically are around for around two three years uh to sell the community out whereas of course the the regular uh, realtor ones, you know, they're hoping to get it all sold within six months. Right, right. And I wanted, the, the, I the, wanted the bottom lines too, and I, I know we need it really. I uh, here's want to hear some of the stuff about our shooting at dusk. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, one of the realities, uh, I'm a broker, and one of the realities I know we have here, we have a few thousand agents and not a very large area, is mm -hmm. that the only thing these people want to hear about is how do I take a picture with my phone. <laughs> and uh, and the thing is, I'm trying to migrate them. This is this is my job in life. You know, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to say that's cute, but and you know, uh, and try to make them understand the fundamental principles of what it takes to take a really good shot and process it properly. And I think that's possible. But the whole idea of getting into high tech. I mean, psychologically, that would be decades to take that many agents. Uh, mm -hmm. in an area like we have, and they have even a couple of or three or four even adopt something like this. So yeah. while that is, it's nice. I'm, I'm really a techie at heart. I love this stuff, but I know it's not real. I mean, I'm, I'm having, I'm not joking. I'm having a hard time getting people to use a tripod. Yeah. Even if they're using it, with, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I said, look, I, I even send out, here's the URL to buy a tripod and the attachment that you can put your phone on a clamp so you can keep the thing square. So all mm -hmm. of this is nice, but that that's what that's the world I'm dealing in. 
you know, it's so funny. I, I hear realtors shooting their own homes with their iPhones. And yes, the iPhone has come a long way. And we're actually teaching people how to shoot with their iPhones. Uh, but we're also teaching them to say, okay, you know what? Use these for the, uh, s the smallest things and use it for the uh, foreclosures that you're not going to get uh, much of a commission on or the ones that are, you know, the, that the tenants haven't cleaned up, the ones that the photography is not going to do much more to try and help it. But aside from that, no, you got to use a professional and you got to get someone who knows what they're doing. Otherwise, you know, it'd be like, God, it'd be like going out and getting your own, uh, getting a stencil set and then doing your own tattoos. It's not a good idea. No. Uh, uh, I'll say one last thing on, on this point, because I, I know I'm sure you want to move along. In New York State, one of the things uh, that I'm involved in is uh, making a, a proposal to the New York licensing, uh, New York State licensing for uh, real estate people mm -hmm. to have to try to take courses, to take CE courses, continuing education courses that almost force them to do a good job and not have an excuse they don't know how to do photography or at least understand what to tell the pro. Here's what I need. Here's what mm -hmm. you need to do. Here's the criteria you're going to have to come up to in order for me to put this on the MLS because what you're putting up right now isn't doing justice to the properties you're selling or they over embellish them to the point where it's not even truth in advertising. So that's yeah. something that's currently in the, uh, in the, in the basket, in New York state right now, I've got that going to them. So we're getting serious about it. So pros right. know what the guidelines are and the agents recognize and respect that they need to do a good job and should work with people who know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. okay. I, think, I, wanted, I wanted to share a couple of, uh, real estate photos that I took with um, my iPhone. Meh. Yep. <laughs> it's good. No. And let's, let's face it. There's enough, uh, enough there that, you know, pull that into Lightroom. We could do some magic with that. Yeah. yeah. That's straight out of the, um, guess what? Photomatics real estate <laughs> camera. That's right. <laughs> it's called Photomatics Real Estate Camera. It's an app for iPhone, and what it does is it uh, help. It brings a lot of that um, that difference of bright and dark back. Guess what? It, it's doing behind the scenes bracketing and and processing on on the fly, and uh, mm -hmm. you can do it handheld. But if you use a man, if you use a little tripod attachment with it, th these are handheld. But if you so it's really just testing it, and uh, if you use it, keep it steady, it really does a great job. I mean, just it's not, it's not like any of us would go in and say that's our professional level thing. But man, it's w w way better than what the built-in stuff can do, like the built-in HDR mm -hmm. stuff can do, and it's made for that situation. Is the point? So I thought I'd take a chance to take an opportunity to throw that out there. Um, by the way, if anybody wants to, um, it's like a it's breaking in, and anybody want if anybody does not have. Um, the photomatics to work to try out bracketing you can um you can do that with um I'm looking for the link i know i have it here somewhere um you can go actually you can go to hdrsoft.com and then on the top there's one of those kind of commonly done covid19 response there's a link up there it takes you here but there's a page that has a lot more details about bracketing how to bracket um links to things like how to bracket on different cameras all kinds of stuff and then there's a free license for photomatics essentials you can get there so it's not the it's not photomatics pro but it, you I mean it it's using all the same uh, engines and things so uh, outside of batch processing and some of the detailed stuff it's it's a great place to start so you can try it if you want to um i wanted to go back to some comments and questions is it okay time to change gears because i know um scott chappelle i think it's like dave chappelle is that the, how you say it chapel uh, he was asking about uh, upgrading a computer. Uh, mm. We were actually having an email exchange earlier, and I just kind of said, hey, come on here, and let's talk about it. Um, and um, let's see. He, in fact, here he's up here. MacBook Pro or Asus? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
either one's going to be either one's going to do great if you're talking about the um the okay what i know is the photomatics part <laughs> and the important thing is to get a lot of ram get at least mm -hmm. eight for sure and these days i mean computers with less than 16 if you're a photographer or even more a videographer I mean make sure it's at least 16 so uh, well, get the get the upgraded version of that and you know um i was talking to uh actually don from last week about this uh about three months four months ago and we and she was saying well you know i need to get a new laptop i don't know what to get and we were talking about the macbooks and uh she's she's been on the mac for years so she's used to it and she said well i don't know I could get this one with 16 or with, uh, you know, the 512 gig. And I said, no, you know what? No, it's going to cost you what? Maybe $1,500 more to get top of the line. So you get your 32 gigs of Ram, you get your two terabytes on there and you get the advanced graphics processor, just get it. And here's my logic for it. When you get something that is that much faster, it's going to speed up your workflow. So if it saves you 10 minutes per shoot, that 10 minutes per shoot over the course of a year is going to save you a whole lot more than that $1,500 is worth. So with us, when we get stuff for, uh, for uh, when I get stuff for my team, yeah, it's top of the line. You know, we bump everything up to two to, to uh, 32 gigs. We bump it up to, well, we try and have two terabytes of uh, SSD space so that we can at least keep uh, the jobs for an entire week on our laptops in case a client comes back and says, oh, can you Photoshop this or can you yeah. do this? And, you know, it's, it's all accessible. But that additional cost, you're going to make it back. No problem. This is, a, this, this is a tool that you're using for work. So you want to have the best tools for that to speed it up for you. And when, yeah. when you're busy working and getting equipment for that, it makes it really frees you up to get really what you need. Because if you're just starting out and you're not working a lot, that's a whole different decision. Um, so you can get you can get a lot more. But one thing is you can get a lot more power at lower price going with win, some of those Windows machines compared to mm -hmm. the Mac. Yeah, and, I'm running a 32 uh, gig memory on an Asus. And yeah, it's less expensive. And... I think basically it's what you're used to as a platform. If you've been using Macs all along, you know, that that's where your head's going to be. I've, I've always used PCs because I've always appreciated the fact I don't have to have special dongles and everything else to hook up to the Macs. Yeah. So I'm a big guy on, on making it easy. So my preference is, you know, the Asus with 32 has been uh, a workhorse. It's very, very good. Yeah, it's a, it's a, we're a good yin and yang because I, I was going to say my, some advice, some advice coming from me is that get what you enjoy working on because that's also going to be extremely valuable over time. And for me, and again, I'm just like cameras. I don't like the equipment is amazing. So if I use one camera, it doesn't mean I don't like another one. And the same thing is I highly, highly prefer my experience on, on, on Mac. And when I, I have a windows machine, I need it for some things, for some things that I do mostly that I can, talk to other people about what to do on their computer is really what I need it for. And I just don't like it. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I really don't. And, uh, but, um, I also, I used to be the guy that wanted to customize everything. Now I just need that stuff to work. I need, I got to work to do. I just got to work and I want it to work the way it is. And that's, that's one of the things you get with Apple, right? Is it, you can't change a lot you can't make a lot of decisions, but it's going to work. <laughs> so we're, um, we're going to have a fight, Ron. I, I think, I think, the, <laughs> I think the newer PCs are pretty reliable. They, that, figured, out well, how, they figured out how to put yeah. viruses in Macs too these days. So we're good. Yeah. Well, yeah <laughs> though, the virus thing is nice to not have to worry about tip, but you kind of do. You still have to yeah. be smart. If you're opening up an email with an attachment that you don't know, then I'm sorry, but you just shouldn't be using either Mac or Windows. But it, no, it's just a preference thing. And like, like I say, I'm mm -hmm. not telling anyone that they should have a different preference than me. I just, I, what I'm trying to say is that if that works and you enjoy using it, that's a huge, huge uh, oh. value that people don't put in that um, uh, you, you might see down the road is when you enjoy sitting down at that computer 
and you don't fear anything or you just whatever works for you. And I guess that's what I'm getting at. So use that in the value thing too. But the, I've never spent better money than getting an SSD. So mm -hmm. back, back before they were all more as common, oh, yeah. get, make sure you're using SSDs because they're so much more reliable and so much faster. Yeah, um, um, yeah. um, SSD, um, uh, hard drives. Yeah. What is yeah. it? SSD stand for again? No, yeah, it's solid state drive, solid state drive. Thanks. Yeah. So no, no moving parts is the, yeah. is the point. No, I will say we, uh, there was a point around two years ago that we were about to switch over all of our computers to, um, to windows machines. And a, my staff said, no, we're, we're happy with the Macs. But the only reason that we wanted to was because Windows uh, Surface Laptop came out with the touch screen, yeah. with the pen. And so you could edit on your screen with a pen. Yeah. And, and take, geez, take that small device with you. Yeah. Oh, it, was just, it, would, it would have been fantastic. But, you know, my team said, no, we're, we like Apple. So yeah. we stuck with that. That's one thing Apple's really way behind on is... Um... The tablets are a different operating system. It doesn't run the same. It's it's not no, Mac OS. No. It's it's iOS, and that's for better and for worse, I guess. But mostly for worse because you can't just use you can't just use all the same things on it. People don't understand that. So that's one one of those great things about Windows is that Surface. Take it with you. It's a tablet. Love it. Yeah. Thank you. You made, my, you made my point, Ron. I appreciate. It. I did yeah. buy an Apple yeah. iPad Pro though, just to make you guys happy. Oh, those things are fantastic. No, like I, like I said, I'll never, I'll never like go to bat for Apple and say that they're so much better or they're, but okay. I, I just prefer it. That's all. Okay. Like I, uh, like I say in cameras, um, I have Nikon and Olympus and that makes me, and I, I'm very proud of making this up. That makes me poly cameras, by the way. <laughs> and, um, if I had, if I could, was given or decided I was rich and want to change to canon and i decided that for some reason or, or uh sony or whatever i have no problem with that it's whatever works for me and my I, I love my equipment i've used canons on projects when i was working with others and love those too so in the same way you just gotta you just gotta decide on the ones that works for you that might have to do with what you have access to to someone that you know close have canon lenses it's a good reason to get a canon you know because yeah. you can swap stuff around um, on the other hand, watch out if you're like a, uh, married couple, for instance, or something like that. And you both have one camera system, the same camera system. And you start competing for those pieces of equipment for certain given situations. So watch out for that too. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's a lot about computers, right? Scott, yeah. <laughs> um, you know what? Costco will take anything back for any reason. <laughs> for any length of time oh any length of time so uh, I, I, I i'll tell you a quick one i went to costco years ago i was broke getting started and i had a project i needed a 64-bit system so i the guy at costco said after i asked him a bunch of questions over and over he said listen to what i'm saying you can bring it back if you decide you don't like the color we'll take it back. He got tired of me trying to be sure enough. Yeah. I used it for the project for a couple of weeks, brought it back. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so anyway, I don't, I'm not suggesting anybody does that, but the thing is you can, you can, um, try them really get a really good trial and then you can bring it back. So uh, I think they know most people won't. So I don't know that's a good, no, that's a good thing. Costco's probably not happy about it. Yeah. Um, Oh, who wants this one? What is your favorite city? <laughs> this favorite city. Now, is that a photography question? Is that <laughs> I <don't> you... <laughs> no. <laughs> well, what what's the best? What's it? Quick. What's your favorite place you've been for a photo for a photo reasons? For photo uh, reasons? Photographically speaking. A city or a yeah, place? Yeah. Uh, a city. City Kyoto, Kyoto, Japan. Really? Yeah. Nice. The back streets are just phenomenal. I was there before I was too much into photography so many, so long ago. I got, I got to go with either Prague or maybe Chicago. Hmm. The street, uh, fo street photography and architectural and just fun. And uh, well, I'll have to head down to Chicago once all, all this is over and the restaurants are open and things are back to normal ish. 
yeah. in a couple around, of years. Walk around all day and get some Chicago food. But I, I lived in San Francisco for so long, I kind of should include that. But I just think of it as normal. But it's a f- great photo city. Clyde hmm. says uh, Indianapolis. I, I'm not, I know I sound like a homie here, but New York City is pretty nice. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, New York is nice. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Somebody, yeah. I've had some photo walks there that have just been... But again, like Chicago, it's not just about... It's not only about the photos you get, but the interactions you have. And just you're just right. out there with... Uh, I don't know. It's just a whole different experience. Yeah. All um, right, Ron. We've been at this for an hour. Sorry. We, t- we told our people that we we're going to be talking about Twilight. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> I yeah. want to thank everybody for asking questions to keep us going. But Twilight, yeah, let's go. All right. <laughs> so uh, I think I think was, was it, oh, shoot, was it La- Lana that was uh, asking about that in, earlier in the comments? It was, yes. I think she was here last yeah. week. And then um, I think Perfect. she came back for that reason. All right. So, Laura. Laura. Laura, sorry. Yeah. So Laura, yes, we are going to start talking about twilight photography. <laughs> All right. Now, Ron, do you do a lot of twilight as well? No, very little. I've, I've been asked from time to time. Yeah. But it's been a while. I was looking for samples and I'm like, I don't really want to show anything that I've, that, because, because again, real estate photography for me doing a lot of it is kind of, is, mm-hmm. has been a while. Now it's more working with other people that are doing it. <clears throat> and, um, I mean, I have my thoughts on it, but I thought I would, um, but you started for sure. And I can either ask you or offer some of some of mine. Uh, some sure. of my... Now, did you get my email from uh, earlier? I couldn't find any email from you. No oh, way. <laughs> Shoot. I sent it to your HDR soft one. Um, let me try and get that link. Sorry, my computer is actually farther away from me than it should be. Okay. So can you now. Text, text message me. I'm, um... Oh, yeah. I, uh, I definitely do that. I was trying to keep uh, keep things closed on the computer just so I don't have too many slowdowns. Gotcha. It's, uh, it's working really hard on all this video and everything. Gotcha. So the, the my, thing my, with Mac, Twilight... my Mac is being challenged, <laughs> but it's also <laughs> like ten years old, so I feel okay about it. <laughs> you know what? If you can keep it going for ten years, maybe not uh, ten, maybe seven, se- seven, seven. I think. Uh, uh... Copy link. Let's see now. Let's send it that one first. All right. Oh wait, Laura J is oh, what? <laughs> Laura, I did. I'm sorry. I, yeah, yeah. When you were Laura J, why didn't I even notice that was <laughs> Laura J? I'm oh, sorry. Too many things going on. Okay, so I just texted you a a quick link. This is uh, one of the shoots that, that I did a, a couple. Of, I don't okay. know. I wanted to Dropbox and uh, look for. It for anything and i pulled up uh these two samples so that's the first one there that is what we did for uh for a realtor a while a while back okay, and then this by. should be should be coming up it's just taking a little um sure and then the second link is one that we did for a builder now when we do twilights for uh for real estate for realtors we tend to try and provide anywhere from around 40 to 70 sometimes up to 100 photos and uh, during a twilight session. Now you can imagine twilight is uh, shooting an interior when you got all the interior windows as being blue. And this happens uh, because as the sun starts going down, everything starts getting darker and sunlight being, well, daylight more blue-ish, it will start getting uh, bluer. So yeah, if you scroll into some of the um interior images uh, you'll see what i'm talking about there so you see how the windows there are blue now yeah. one of the things is when we first started out doing real estate photography back 10 years ago we only did in uh twilight uh photos and the reason for that was we would go into a place mm-hmm. make sure that all the bulbs were all tungsten bulbs so that we could keep wow. all the color 100 percent perfect now now that we've uh moved on uh and gotten to this day and age of where you can't avoid seeing mixed lights uh we've had to change our processes so that we can color correct better to make sure that all the colors are still right but this kind of look with the blue light uh, blue windows uh 
top regular strategy. Um, the sorry, Ryan, I'm going to get to your comment just uh, in a in a bit there. But for us here in Calgary, uh, what we find is that the things that you see outside of the windows for 75 percent of the year, those are not it doesn't look. Uh, the lights in there, yeah. uh, they might be. Okay. Yeah, might be. No, they look like they're uh, they look like they're twenty seven. Uh, 2700 LEDs yeah. um, but for the most part in Calgary you don't like to see what's outside because uh, we're northern we have you know the leaves fall off the trees here in September and it turns into this brown beige gray exterior uh, really quickly and so for yeah for 75% of the year we don't have anything outside the windows that really looks that great in a lot of places. So to get these blue windows to kind of hide some of that stuff outside hmm. is great hmm. because otherwise, like for this photo here, you'd be looking out and you'd be seeing the side of a garage that is all gray and right. the roof is going to be, you know, there might be some snow on there. There might be some dead leaves on there and it's not going to present very well, but when it's nice and blue like this, uh, all of a sudden a strategy it looks nicer right and so i have a lot of clients that have pretty much made this twilight look their signature look for all their listings and that differentiates them from everybody else out there and it's a it's a nice look now you're only shooting one house a day at that time i mean one photographer Yes, one photographer, one twilight per day. So because of that, we do offer a, we do charge that out at a, at a premium. And what's now, the, for, what's the time? What's the amount of time you have with that light? We have around twenty to uh, twenty to forty minutes, depending on the weather. And could you? So, is that time is that enough time to get an exterior as well? Yes. Because so, I know that when I have done exteriors, it was a bit of a waiting game, and I probably spent well minimum of you know 20 30 minutes a lot of it was waiting just to get that one moment where it ends mm -hmm. up being one shot but but i guess with experience then you can really dial that down right yeah and so when we do the when we do these we've got a, a strict uh schedule that we have to uh adhere to and it is uh we will arrive on site half an hour before sunset uh, and then official official sunset time like published time or are you just yep. eyeballing it no no uh, uh published time and uh you know when you ask siri what time sunset's at right yeah take half an hour before that we get on site we will then that gives us enough time to go inside turn on all the lights and make sure that the inside is all prepped and at the same time what we do there is we get to go inside and it's not meter the rooms but get a general sense of the rooms so for example um, with this house here, one of the issues was that it's a long, narrow house in, uh, that's boxed in uh, on both sides. And so when you look out the windows to the side, it's looking almost straight into another building. And because of that, you're not going to get it. There's no sky there. So that part's going to get a lot darker, a lot quicker. Same as if you were looking out the, the, the backyard and if it was wide open and so all you saw was sky, it would stay lighter than say if it was uh, full of dense trees. So what we do is we take that first little while to walk through the place, take a look outside, take a look at what the view is and try and judge how bright that window is going to be for how long. And as well, we also look at the lights and say, okay, well this place here has it's really brightly lit or this place here has like, you know, one lamp in the corner that's going to put out just 60 watts. And we judge that because the, the key to getting uh, this kind of blue window is to be able to um, match it so that the outside is roughly around a stop to two stops darker than, than the inside. Mm -hmm. And you will get that kind of luck. I'm still, and, stuck. I'm still stuck on the, having all tungsten lights because well that's what we used to do <laughs> but now we just color to... correct it yeah okay. now we just color correct is, oh, you yeah. go in and change fluorescent i mean fluorescence into tungstens and oh yeah because remember remember back around 
ten, eight, ten years ago when all those curly compact fluorescents were uh, the yeah. green choice, and they were horrible because they did they cast this really bad green hue over everything. Yeah. And so we would go in and we would tell the realtors and the homeowners to change those out. And most of them did. De- a lot more depression in the world during that time, huh? Yeah. And, but now it's, uh, it's a whole lot easier. We get to do, uh, do this without having to do that, um, which is fantastic. Now, with, the, with shooting the interiors, uh, there's two tricks that I want to tell everyone right now. When you're shooting these, uh, let's go into, say, like the living room one where, where you can see the, the floor there, or sorry, the dining room one, uh, top, uh, top right corner there. One of the key mistakes that I see a lot of uh, real estate photographers do is they shoot too early. And when you shoot too, uh, the way that you know that you've shot too early is if you can see the blue reflecting off of the floors, the hard surfaces, or the walls. Right. So you want to wait until uh, when you shoot, you don't see any of that blue light coming in and hitting the floor. Because when it does, well, you get the blue light, you add it with brown, blue and brown makes everything look purple. And that's what you're going to start, uh, you're going to want to avoid. You're going to want to avoid having that uh, color change in the interior things. And same thing where, where you get a carpet, which is uh, more gray. If you don't shoot it a little bit later, you are going to get it so that the carpet starts looking purple and yeah. the gray furniture starts looking purple. Mm. And that's just a that's just an effect of uh, shooting at this time. Now, in terms of exteriors, uh, we had that one question from uh, Ryan. Ooh, yeah. Was that Ryan that had the question? Does exterior photography help negate, negate awkward, awkward shadows? shadows? Uh, yes, yes. If you do, uh, if you shoot at a place where there's a lot of trees, um, yeah, of course. Without uh, without the sun, you're not going to have the problems with uh, with the shadows from the from the trees there at all. That's, that's one of the reasons, just photography in general, that the those golden and blue hours are so good is that the 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 light can be so soft, especially after the sun is actually down. That's so soft, and then the light is largely man-made because you have you just have some of the natural light still remaining and then you're you're accenting it with the interior lights and maybe lights that you bring yeah exactly those trees yeah those tree shadows shouldn't be a problem at that point and i love and i love shooting these uh these twilights because you know it does make the home look so much warmer and more inviting it's like you're going over to you know have thanksgiving dinner somewhere It, it makes you feel happy to go in uh, definitely like that. Now this, this, the, one, uh, this one kind of gets to the crux, doesn't it? Uh, Ryan again. He says, "I'm in California. I'm in California. Shoot oceanfront properties. Lucky. Uh, is there yeah. a benefit to twilight photography, or <laughs> give? And here's a giveaway. Is it opinion based? <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So uh, let's let's talk about why we're shooting. Uh, why we're shooting. What's the message that you want? If you've got this beautiful Cal- uh, California property that has bay windows that opens up, sees the ocean, and you can see the sunset every night. Well, that's the selling point. It's seeing that sunset every night. So yes, you want to be able to shoot it so that you've got the interior all brightly, uh, nicely lit. And then you see that beautiful sunset in the background with the ocean. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, there would be a huge benefit to that. And the other thing is this, when we look at twilight, um, when you shoot anything twilight, what it does is it shows what the interior lighting is like. So if you have a place that's, and that has immaculate interior lighting, shoot it at twilight. Otherwise, it's not going to even show up. Why would they spend like thousands and thousands of dollars doing uh, incredible lighting if it's not even going to show? Um, talking like, you're talking, talking about like landscape lighting? Landscape lighting and then uh, just interior lighting. Like uh, We've seen places where, for example, they put uh, accent lighting underneath the lower cabinets in the kitchen or they put uh, uh, spotlighting throughout the house or art uh, special lighting to light up the artwork, uh, stairwells and architectural features. Like there's one place that we shot where it was, um, it was a, huge pl- a huge place 
nice big wooden beams all, all across the ceilings. And then they had accent lights in the beams to shoot up into the, uh, the cathedral style ceiling. It was beautiful, but you can't see that unless you have uh, shoot it at twilight. Right. That's yeah, that's right. So it's not, it's uh, actually showing, it's actually showing a detail benefit of the house like, that has values showing things that wouldn't show otherwise. That's a good point. Like, Most of us, I think we think of it as just kind of a hero shot that makes it look, guess what? In that great light, it looks its best. That's <laughs> not a big, um, not, not complicated to realize, but that's true. You're, you're showing things like those, those, uh, great, um, lighting they put around the property outside yeah yeah um, uh so now this one here is that is Santa, a, santa's workshop or is no yeah <laughs> this is a show home that we you know that we shot for a builder they uh um with us the the deadline for the awards is in january and so last minute they call me up and this is probably around this uh, probably around christmas and they asked me to shoot this show home and i said well guys when was this built? And they're like, oh yeah, well, we got everything done uh, last summer. I was like, we could have gotten a beautiful shot of the exterior back then, but yeah, you know, that's why it's all snowy. It's uh, we had that's to really, get a last minute. That's really but, that's a unique one too. But once you go in, uh, you know, oh, can, so just to talk to Ryan's point here, like you see that sky there, imagine getting your, your oceanfront property with that kind of sky in the background. That's gonna be, that's gonna be killer. Right. Yeah. And there's a, uh, and there's commonly that is really getting common to replace the sky nowadays, isn't it? It is. Um, and we do it. It's, it's simple, but really there's, I don't know. I, I still like, I, I still like the natural look because there's certain things that you can't as, as good as a photographer, as good as of an editor as you are, you're never going to get it perfect. Like for example, with the sun going down there, how that little bit of orange light is now illuminating the side of the house. You're not going to get that. It's not going to be natural. The other ones I like, um, actually, if you're in California and you're shooting the front of a house and you've got the sunset reflecting in the windows, that's going to look fantastic. Um, but you're not going to get that if, unless it's, uh, unless it's real. And is that how, how often, the time I recommend that being done, I again, my whole thing is not to falsify stuff as much as possible. Or matter of fact, not to falsify, period. But in the area that we live, and I said it's very overcast a lot of the time, and I think that's really to the detriment of the houses because they're not mm -hmm. like that all the time. And so I don't think it's uh, bad practice if you have to. To make, oh, yeah. To put a blue sky, you know, it's just not, that's not fair to the seller either. Yeah. But your point yeah. in trying to do the perfect cut, it's certainly not trivial. Yeah, no, I've definitely I've not. Only, I've only used it in, again, San Francisco summertime, which for anybody that doesn't know, that means fog. So that's the only time I've used it. Otherwise, I'm, I'm a big believer in not because, in fact, that's one of the reasons, you know, real estate photography, you, a lot of times you have to be there when you're allowed to be there. Yeah. Or when you can fit it in your schedule, that it's part of that <clears throat> part of that uh, real estate business. And when you don't have the best light, that's one of the reasons for that I can that I use for bracketing that I can get a decent sky most of the time. And, right. yeah. and as long as there's a sky there, even if it's a, not the best part, of, best hour to do it, I can still get a decent sky. Uh, but it, the only exception is during fog, really. Yeah, no, exactly. So here to, to Ryan's point, uh, click on that top right image there. Top right. Okay. Yeah. And so this is as good as the sunset gets uh, where we are. Just you're not, you're not selling Calgary very well. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, people are going to move to Saskatchewan instead, right? Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> or, I mean, what I'm saying, uh, Saskatoon. I mean, yeah, it's the Paris, it's, the Paris uh, of Canada. Come on. Good. Oh yes, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can get a beautiful uh, sunset in the background, and uh, that'll definitely help sell your properties there because it accentuates the view. So um, my my question for both of you then: do you, does, How often is the twilight shot on the shot list? Like, and, and I know Bill, you're you're working with people that are probably more about real estate business than photography, but 
still. Uh, is that uh, commonly on the shot list? I would say no. Yeah. Uh, again, again, it's our circumstances. I, I guess the mm -hmm. amount of sun we get in the sky, pure sunny days is fairly rare. Uh, but we do get some beautiful fall weather and, and some beautiful sunsets too. And the idea is to take advantage of that whenever you can. And that's certainly if you, uh, there's a lot of apps that tell you where the sun's going to be, when it's going to be, yeah. you should use them. You definitely should use them. And it, it makes a huge difference in uh, the shot you end up with. Right. We could, uh, so yeah, we, um, Bill, uh, it's your first time that you joined Rob and I, we, we tend to keep going because there's questions mm -hmm. and uh, can you tell that we just yeah. like talking about photography? So we can kind of call it any time do you guys sure. want. And but I just thought I would um, finish with some of the comments. Um, hey, before we get back to Ryan's one, because that's another one that would probably go mm -hmm. for a while, is uh, Laura in the private chat, Laura, keeping it private, huh? Should we not be telling you? <laughs> Maybe she doesn't want her name said. Uh, I'm curious. I'm curious how you get 70 photos in 20 to 40 minutes. Ah, okay. So there, uh, there's the, that second nugget that I was going to tell you about. Yeah. All right. So Good job. It's, keep you on track. Yeah. So it's it's all about math and timing. So for example, if you were if you're doing these five, uh, uh, and I think we sort of touched on this last time. If we do uh, five shots, five exposures at uh, one e one or two EV apart, and we're shooting at ISO, say, 200, you're not going to be able to get this done. And that is because the amount of time that your shutter is open is too long. You're, it, you're just going to run out of time. Could you, could you, um, say, that, could you say that again? You're, you're talking about like uh, the longest being a couple seconds, right? Yeah, because if you've got, you know, four second, two second, one second, uh, one tenth of a second, and one twenty fifth of a second, right there, you're going to be standing there for around 15, 16, uh, 15 seconds, just waiting for that shutter to, to, to finalize. It doesn't you sound like very much. Ah, but when you're doing 70 photos, and if you want to do 70 photos in 20 minutes, then it, it, that 15 seconds is huge mm -hmm. because you also have to think about the time that it takes for you to move from one space to another to uh, to uh, set your verticals and then to shoot again. So what we've done for this is we've actually said, uh, taken a look at it and said, okay, well, how many shots does the realtor need? And if it's a realtor, we like to give around 70 photos. And because we know that it's going to be around 20 minutes that we can get these perfect shots, we just do the math and we say, okay, uh, we need, essentially it comes down to, we need to make this work as fast as we can. And so when we're shooting, we do, <laughs> yes, to, to uh, whoever P is, yes, 70. Um, uh, <laughs> so it, wait, it, I didn't it, mean to do <laughs> All right, let's keep it. Let's keep it PG thirteen. I clicked the wrong one. It came in right at the. It came in right as I was. <laughs> yeah, right so as I was clicking get, that one. So to get there, um, the thing is this: if you've got 70, uh, 70 photos, we can just make them quicker. And how do we do it? We do it. Uh, uh, we bracket using three shots because uh, at twilight your range isn't as high, which right. is nice. I was going to say, and, I was going to say, I meant to interject with those twilight interiors. It reduces mm -hmm. your dynamic range. So that reduces the bracketing needed. Yeah. Yeah. So, so three shots is, is typically enough. Um, the other thing is if we're shooting these for realtors, they're putting it onto MLS. Once they print out their, uh, their info sheets, most of the realtors that we know do not go and get these printed in magazines. And if they do get them printed in magazines, they're not double page spreads. And so we're not looking for billboard quality. So you can get away with shooting these at around anywhere as high as ISO 1600. Right. Yeah. And at ISO 1600, F8, three shots, you can get these done real quick. And so essentially we, we would set up our tripod um, and Actually, here's a here's another trick. Uh, at f8, you'll have to autofocus everything, every shot. At f13, you just have to put it into hyperfocal distance, put it into manual focus, and 
essentially from there, it's click, align, click, click, align, click. Yeah, I think that's a great point. A lot of people don't understand the use of the hyperfocal distance, and yeah. that can save you a tremendous amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, yeah. it really can. It's something probably ought to talk about at some point. Yeah. Well, do, depending on um, focal length, it's a it's a big conversation. So anybody that doesn't know seriously, um, oh, I can, wrap, I can wrap this. Yeah, Google it. Look up my hyperfocal distance. It's a little bit of math, but once you once you right. put once you invest the time into it, it's super easy. Once you get your settings, and you can right. reuse them all the time. And um, I'm gonna I'm going to uh, wrap this into um, what apps um, we were mentioning about, um, and then he corrected it. <laughs> what apps yeah. specifically? Um, I use photo yes. pills and photo pills does the things we talked about beforehand and it has hyperfocal in it as well. And it's, yep. you know what, it's just a really cool app and a cool community as well. So there's, there's a lot of reasons that it does all those things. So photo pills will do all these things for you. There's even a hyperfocal calculator and what hyperfocal means yes. is once you set certain things, you know, what's always in focus out to infinity from somewhere to infinity. So if you, I use a lot, my 14 millimeter, cause I shoot smaller spaces a lot and I can go with F8. And as long as I know it's within a few feet, if there's nothing I care about within, um, uh, one and a half, a little less than two feet, if I recall, mm -hmm. then I don't have to worry about it. So that's good advice is you set up the hyperfocal. Yeah. And then the other thing is this, um, check your lenses, find out what your lenses look like. So Ron, if you go back to one of the, the, the interior photos there, um, one of the reasons that we will use f 10 11 12 11, sorry 10 11 13 and if i think it's the living room one on this one uh, maybe that one That's maybe no uh, shoot i'm thinking about a different place so you know when you get a, a twilight shot and you have all your lights looking like they're little stars no. that mm -hmm. that happens uh naturally on lenses at different f-stops. So mm -hmm. for example, with my uh, Canon uh, 16 to 35 f4, it happens at f13 and get these really nice uh, stars on the the, uh, the little pin lights. Mm -hmm. um, with uh, my 11 to 24 Sigma, or sorry, 11 to 24 Canon, I think that happens at f14. And so it's just, it's slightly different, but you'll see where the the stars, the, the tips of the stars come together and then there's some that cross over. Once you find that perfect F-stop to get, those, get that really nice sparkle, we go from that. We use that and we set everything else based on that. So if it's F-13, then we change it up to uh, ISO, uh, ISO 800 or 1600, depending on what on uh what we're shooting it for and then uh you know change the shutter uh, shutter speeds from there but yeah the uh the sparkly lights that's, uh, for your so sony users uh 24 millimeter f16 on full frame does the same that's a setting i see very similar you're absolutely right if you get something you get familiar with that lens it's very helpful mm -hmm. yeah um, my uh my zeiss 21 was uh was actually down to uh uh, F16, where it you know, came out looking really pretty. We can go with our, our, I think our friend P might be a little, um, on caffeine, but, um, <laughs> first of all, who does five exposures, total waste as, as a, as a very, um, hmm. we need, we need I, a whole, we need a whole session on debate that I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, as, as somebody that has a lot of standing in this area, P, I disagree, but again, like computers, like cameras, you got to do what you get your results for. Right. And he goes, um, so that's the way I shoot because I want to cover the full dynamic range, which often takes that on interiors with a bright, sunny, you know, ocean view or something. But on the other hand, he's doing three brackets to spacing with a flash one, which is a great mm -hmm. way. I know a lot of people do that. That's a really good one. And it goes back to one of, I think it was Ryan's questions. He, I don't think we, I don't know if I popped it up, but he asked, do you, if we rec, if, if it's recommended to turn on all the interior lights with all the color differences and because of the different kinds of light sources and using, using a, a flash, um, 
shot is a good way to help manage your color. And again, we can do a whole mm -hmm. talk on that. All right. Um, so there, again, yeah. I'm just going into the fact that there are so many ways to do things and P is really sure about his way. And that's, I guess that's cool, dude. But um, it also, it's also good to recognize other people get great results in different ways. Yeah. Um, uh, buh, buh, buh. So I just want to see, uh, I don't have the private chat up. Did we answer all of Laura's, Laura's questions there? Laura, mm -hmm. do you use flash at twilight? Yes. And you walk around with it then, right? Yes, we do. So you're and doing... part of it is because is uh, just we carry around all the equipment that we need for multiple reasons. Like there's been places where we've gone into where they don't have any lights. And we go into a twilight shoot and there's not a light in the place. Mm -hmm. And the right. switch on the wall is connected to a plug-in in the corner and there's no lamp. Right. Okay, so now you're now you're talking about first of all the time issues we've been talking about are out the door mm -hmm. because you're talking about having a lot of time and you're talking about you're talking about having equipment that can work wirelessly in a pretty pretty decent amount of distance and you're gonna mm -hmm. walk around and and real quick again another whole show could be on this and I've seen whole shows on this by the way and like f stoppers for instance but yeah. they'll walk around and they'll 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 trigger the walk around with a because there's only one of you at a real estate shoot, right? You're not going to take a crew. Mm -hmm. So you're going to walk around with a wireless flash and you're going to be firing the camera remotely and you're going to be in the scene many times with the flash, your lighting areas. Then you go back and spend quite a lot of time putting these things together and masking out. So it's a big deal. Oh, <laughs> That's yeah. What I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I we have... still get all this done with, you know, one, uh, we can do all this with one on camera flash. So it's... Uh, from a, on an exterior. Exterior as well. Okay, again, I'll disagree, but I guess it, I mean, if you're the, if you're so close to the property. But when I've done this, and again, I'm not the big experienced one at it, so I I'm just giving my opinions. Okay, but um, I've I've solved that with both with bracketing. Oh yeah, no, we definitely and, use uh, use the bracketing as uh, okay. as the base. But uh, the the the. the the throw of the flash, I think you'd have to be so close to the property that I don't know if that would work, but, but again, let's do another talk on that sometime. Wider does, uh, does Ryan need anything wider than a 20 millimeter? Usually not. Yeah. Uh, I'm a city, I've been a city guy. I needed a, I, sometimes my 14 was not wide enough. <laughs> You know, we've always, nice. we always suggest that, uh, like our photographers have the Sigma 12 to 24, 24, 105, and then a 100 to 400. And there is nothing that we can't shoot. And whether it's like, we, we've been asked to shoot, uh, bathrooms of, um, mobile homes like RVs. And you can't shoot that bathroom unless you have a 12 mil. It's just way too tight. Uh, cause you still have to be in the doorway and you have to get that shot. So, you know, if you have it, you have it. Um, do we use it all the time? No, my, my standard shooting range is going to be around 20, I would say 21 to 28 is, uh, is my, is where 90% of my shots are going to be. And then, uh, bigger houses, uh, you know, you're probably around the 24 to 35 range. So my, my approach the way I like to look at it and I've you got some samples of it, the wider you go, the more distortion you're going to get. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know how to shoot square, first of all, you're dead in the water right off the bat. Mm -hmm. But if you, but if you at least you know how to shoot square, that helps minimize it. But you've also created a false impression of the space and the techniques that I tend to want to use is uh, I talked earlier about the idea of when you are doing real estate photography, don't think of it as a single shot. You think of it as a multiple series of shots that mm -hmm. can show a bigger space, but it do it more like a videographer might. You're creating mm -hmm. a full movie. So mm -hmm. I, 24 mil for me usually covers it like 90% of the time uh, because anything I've done before with that, you end up cropping it. And, you, and a lot of the examples I see on the MLS systems are so distorted 
that and then if you crop them then to try to straighten them up later in software all you do is you cut off everything they distorted to straighten it up again so you wasted all your time with a wide angle lens for me my personal opinion i think you could do just about anything with a 20 millimeter the toilets are a pain <laughs> I, I agree with that that that's very very difficult but I, I have a personal preference that I approach it. And so for 20 millimeter, I'd be real happy with that. Or and up and up Tw 24 to 28. That's moderately wide and moderately honest about the space. Mm -hmm. Now, there is one other thing. If you are shooting for, uh, for realtors, it's going to be different than if you were shooting for a builder. So, for example, Absolutely. this shot here was actually it was shot for a builder and we shot it extra wide so that they can crop it for their advertisements. And so you'll notice that there's a lot of ceiling and floor. They wanted to have one shot that they could use as a Facebook cover. So imagine we take the top and bottom off of there and it's nice and wide. You can use that as your Facebook cover, but at the same time, it's large enough that you can, you can crop in uh, and make it a square. You've got enough on the top and bottom that you can make it into a square. Still keep that sofa in there. And then that could be become your Instagram post. A lot of the photographers, what they look, they they fail to do when they're first starting out is they fail to see the uh, they fail to ask the client what the photos are going to be used for. Right. They create great photos, but they may not be usable in all the ways that the client may want to use it. And we've had it before in a, when we were first starting out, where a client would come up to us and was like, "Hey, do you have this with a, just a little bit wider so that we can crop it in?" Right. And you need you will need that so yeah. be sure to communicate with your client as to what they need you're really creating options for them that's definitely uh, definitely important to um to go back to the, the that really wide angle uh distortion um it can be taken care of now if you know as long as you know what you're doing and like bill said shoot it level and um but be careful because it does also distort in a different way is that it makes a place look bigger than it is. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a question. I've always kind of had that question because for real estate, it has to be real. You can't be showing something is not real, but you're still giving an impression that way. So, um, yeah, just to throw that out there. Yeah. Um, we should really go. <laughs> oh, um, geez. Yeah. I love, I love that. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. An uh, hour and a half already. No, we, we don't, we don't need tilt shifts anymore. I don't, in my opinion, again, they're awesome, but nowadays you can kind of step back and give a little more space and do that correction that Bill was mentioning about the verticals and kind mm -hmm. of fake it, but, uh, still, uh, uh yeah, the tilt shifts are great, but mm -hmm. you know what? I've just, uh, I just sold my 17 mil and my 24 mil. It's, uh, they, uh, I, I barely, barely brought them out. Yeah, I, I, I carried them around everywhere, but never used them. I did a little comparison I rented one for a job uh, probably about a year ago and I really felt like I was a little bit more free doing it kind of that modern way of, um, of correcting it. Again, if you shoot, if shoot extra that if there's croppable space, you can pretty much pretend you have a tilt shift now by, mm -hmm. by so, and then the tilt shift is only has its limits. So I still, like it was I great when, uh, when I had, when I had my 5d Mark three and it was only a 23 megapixel camera. Yeah, the tilt you needed the tilt shift because as soon as you got, um, you know, you put a sixteen thirty five and you try and correct that, then after you correct for verticals and then you crop, then you're down to maybe a eighteen or fifteen megapixel image, right? right. But now yeah. I'm shooting with a five DSR and that's fifty megapixels. And if yeah. I, you know, I adjust and then crop and then put it out, I'm still at forty megapixels, which is more than enough. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So back then, yeah. Tilt shifts were fantastic, and uh, and we use them all the time. But now with the 50 megapixels, yeah, we, we hardly use it. You know, one thing I hear people mention is that sometimes the best shot, particularly in the well, in the exteriors in particular, is a telephoto. Step way back and take the shot instead of thinking you have to stand close. And you say, mm -hmm. "Oh, I have to have a wide angle lens." Actually, that's a mistake. If you could go back further and, and have line of sight of a property. You got a much much better opportunity of getting that thing straight up to begin with. Oh given, yeah, given, given the space to do that, that's a you have less distortion with a longer lens, and yeah, it's a definitely yep. good way to go. Um, we do I, that uh, where we uh, we we park our car. So uh, typically, what happens is like you know you got a house, you got the you got the front yard, sidewalk, and then you got cars parked all along the road, right? 
So here's a trick that we've, uh, we've done is we actually double park our car on the other side and I've got an SUV and so I just climb onto the roof of my car yep. and that way you're over the uh, over the other car and you, you shoot uh, you shoot from there and it's it's a great look um, as usual my, as usual Rob brings in well there, I'm sure there's others but since this one is new for me, this since this one is new for me I'm yep. making it my pick for the price of admission um, advice of the day <laughs> 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 yeah, I agree. Because I provide value. <laughs> I mean, I guess I, I uh, yeah, uh, um, I don't need to go off on tangents, but that's a really good one. So what you're doing is solving a few problems by you're getting up above, so the cars are out of the, the other cars are out of the view. Plus, you're getting higher to help with that distortion issue. Because let's mm -hmm. pretend it's a tall building for a moment. Say it's a few stories. You're, that's probably not yeah. what you have in mind. But I'm always see see my my thing with getting back stepping back and zooming in bill is you know i'm on look behind me that's geary street they're, they're, i know I'm what's really back. behind <laughs> <laughs> no, I, i'm but not arguing that i'm, a, did, I'm living in God's shoot, country here in central new york we, we, we usually yeah. have a little more distance when i, I, did, when I did shoot the exterior of this building though i brought a pole yeah. and got as high as i could yeah and it still wasn't high enough so i still did that fake tilt shift solution that i that i was talking about so i had to combine ideas something rob probably would have come up with if he was there but anyway if you're just shooting a, a property that is still a little bit higher you're you're helping with the cars in front and you're helping with that you're, you're you don't need a tilt shift if you can get up high high enough if you, so, any of you guys yeah. ever use like uh like what i got the ipad for uh like with a sony camera i could tether that uh, mm -hmm. all right and i could literally put it up on a pole i could look at the ipad and know yeah. if i got it straight yeah, that's, yeah. that's one, so that's camera, one way to do it. Yeah. And it, it's just that few extra feet makes a difference. Yeah. And I have been known to take out a short step ladder and uh, and have that in the trunk of the car and pop that up. And again, it helps. But usually okay. I shoot wide enough. I know I probably have to correct a lot of things. But I, I stopped from interjecting when you were talking about it, um, how to shoot a 70 images in 20 minutes. And I, I, but it'll it'll bring it back together back here. I, the reason I cannot shoot a house in 20 minutes is because I spend 15 messing with the darn cam ranger it's just connect disconnect disconnect <laughs> so that's that's my reason but uh, I, I like to go low tech whenever i can i like to have a wired remote and not deal mm -hmm. with all that but you need it sometimes and so anyway that was my i didn't want to i love it but i hate it at the same time you know mm -hmm. um <laughs> with that could should we um just need someone here to push the stop button sure <laughs> let's let's call it a week and uh yeah. we'll try this again uh next week yeah, good, or so. good stuff guys um thanks everybody for commenting in there um i saw a, few, a couple of people trying to pop on and join us on the video but it wasn't working i saw a few devices not connected coming on and coming off and trying so thanks for trying we'd love to get uh, some more people on to join the conversation um it can just be here for a second you don't have to commit to hanging out up to you um for next time and and i think we are going to try to make this a regular thing we're gonna i think I think Rob and I, we're going to anchor this for a little sure. an hour. And, um, <laughs> and uh, I'm thinking Fridays, mid midday on Fridays. Sounds, uh, sounds good. And so maybe we can get some other people to comment out. I feel like on Fridays, we've had a lot more people live watching than on Saturdays because we've done both. So if that's the reason, um, if that's, if that's the reason, if it's just the scheduling. Um, so please comment afterward or send us an email join the group here join the group join i'm such a rookie at this join facebook group there photomatics hdr it's brand new so you can um be one of the first whoever joins can be one of the first and kind of set the set the tone for and what as kind well of if, you could, be. if you guys have any uh suggestions as to what you'd like to have us talk about by all means uh let us know beforehand and uh we can uh, start uh, thinking about it and yep. uh, we promise next time if we do have a topic that we're going to talk about we will start talking about it uh, sooner than an hour in you can, uh, <laughs> the audience can hold us the audience can hold us responsible by commenting and saying dudes <laughs> yeah <laughs> and hopefully it's not always dudes yeah, <laughs> but, but um uh, we're, yeah you can hold us responsible there as, uh, as we're doing this um it really started out really for fun and for sanity during the quarantine but it's it's staying fun so um 
we can stick to a schedule if we need to kick it up a professional notch. All right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thanks guys. Um, just really quick. I'll put up, um, uh, put up uh, where to find bill and it's bill W S R E. So W S yeah. The William storm real estate. Oh, of course. William Hill okay. at Gmail and uh, Calgary photos. No Calgary photos.ca. That's right. You can find Rob. Um, you can find me best places. Uh, well on that photomatics HDR group. You can find me supported, supported HDR soft just um, for my own work and uh, outside of the whole photomatics conversation, if you want, or within it. Um, that site I'm kind of building and just all the different stuff I do. So it's kind of where it's going. You can find me there. So hopefully see you guys on Facebook, on the comments, and um, hopefully Friday if you want to, uh, anybody wants to get into this next week. And uh, thanks, gents. All right. All right. Cheers. Have a good week. Thank Take you, care. everyone. I'm clicking on end broadcast. Adios. End broadcast.